everybody, what's going on? Today I'm going to show you how to install Minecraft Forge for the Minecraft servers. That's different than the client, which is what you play on, but the server is what people will connect to if you want to start a server for your friends to play modded Minecraft on. Um, guide will be for you. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to files.minecraftforge.net. I'll put that link in the description. And then when you get there, depending on the version that you want to use, I'm going to use the latest version of 1.16.4. You're going to go to that page. If you want, say 1.12, you go to this one, etc. So we're at 1.16.4's page. What you're going to do is click Show All Versions. And then you see the star right here next to 35.1.0 right now. That means that that's the most stable version. There's more recent versions that might have more features, but the bug sign here means that it could be buggy, so you might not want to use it, especially if you want consistently stable Minecraft server. So instead of clicking on installer, you're going to click on the I right next to it. That's going to skip a bunch of ads that you have to go through if you the regular way. So when you click on that, it's going to download Forge installer like this one. And uh, that's done install or downloading. You're going to double click it. And it's going to ask you, do you want to install the client or do you want to install the server? You're going to click on the server. And then it's going to say there's already files maybe. But regardless, you're going to want to click these dot dot dots right here. And you're going to go to the desktop. That button that says desktop. Then you're going to right click in the white space and click new folder. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to name it Minecraft Server. So now we have this Minecraft Server folder on our desktop. Then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do some downloading and installing of the files. Give it a minute or so, and it should be done. And once that's done, you'll have some files in your new Minecraft server folder. New libraries, some other things. This right here is going to be the file that you launch to start Minecraft server. But to launch it, you don't double click it. You have to create a new, go to right, right click the white space, click new, then go to text document, name it run, then open it so you can edit the file. Inside this file, you're going to copy and paste this right here. It's java-xmx2g-xms2g-jar, forge, the name of the file, .jar, and no GUI. Don't worry if you don't want to write that down on your own. I'll post it in the description. So once you get that in there, you're going to click File, Save As. Then in the same folder, Minecraft Server folder, you're going to keep the name as Run. But you're going to click save as type drop down box, change it from text documents to all files, and then change the end of the name to dot bat, B A T. And you can close this, and in this, you'll see your new run file. You can delete the dot text file, the text version, to leave the Windows batch file version. Then all you have to do is double click that gonna say a bunch of things and then close that's because you have to accept the EULA and the EULA is some kind of you meant to not break terms of service of Minecraft so change the word false in this file to true then control s or file save save it and once you do that all you have to do is click run Now it's actually starting the Minecraft server for real this time.
As you can see, it says preparing spawn location, etc. And once you see this done line, done, that's when you know that the server is running, but we're not done there yet. Now you're going to close the server, delete this folder called world, and then see the server properties file. You're going to right click that, and then you're going to go to open with and to more apps. You're going to scroll down until you see notepad. Open it with Notepad, and you'll see all of these new options. Now, I don't want to go through all of them to explain them all for you, but a lot of them are self explanatory, like allowing flight means you can it'll not ban people who are flying. Allowing nether means the nether will be active so that someone can city in to build another portal. Other things might be a little more complicated, like this broadcast console to ops. It's not truly important when you aren't running a giant server for that one. Difficulty you might want to change. That can be easy, medium, hard. Might even be hardcore mode for that. And some of the other ones, like, oh, there's hardcore right there. Level name. You might want to name the world something unique instead of world, like my world, for instance. Level seed. If you are a big fan of doing special unique seeds for your worlds, this is where you'd put that. You could put it right in like, like this. And that would be the seed for your world. Level type default. Um, this doesn't mean much unless you have certain mods that change the world. Like, for instance, Biomes of Plenty. You would have to change the level type from default to BOP. And then some of the other ones like the MOTD, so you can give a message for anyone who logs in, like "Hello, my friends," for instance. Um, PVP, server IP, you should leave blank. Server port, you should keep it two five five six five, unless unless you're doing some advanced stuff like running multiple servers on the machine, spawning animals, monsters, NPCs. Spawn protection is. Um, an option that will block people from breaking anything in the first 16 block radius of where spawn is. And whitelist will allow you to write down all the names of the people that you specifically want to be able to join your world and it will block the rest of them. And you'd fill out the list of names in whitelist.json. You can just do open with and then edit with uh, notepad again. Do that. And the last important option is this view distance. If you want people to be able to see more than 10 block, 10 chunk distances, then you can increase that. But if your world's getting laggy, then you can lower that to like four, six, something like that. And the server should lag less. But if you like all the options as they are, then you're almost done. All you have to do is click run again and the server will start up just like it had before. So it's repairing the spawn area. And then we can test it by opening Minecraft. And then once Minecraft loads, you can go to multiplayer. And then for your test, turn the sound down there for just a minute. So for the test, you can go to multiplayer and then click direct connection. And then you're just going to type in local host. That just points it directly to yourself. And you'll see that the world is putting in. This is Minecraft server that's not run on your own computer. Well, that's not run by the game itself. It's run by a separate process now. So you can see that the world is working. And then there's only one more step left before you invite your friends. 
and that would be adding mods. So to add mods, you're going to go to curseforge. I think it's .net, let's see, .com. Then you're going to find Minecraft. Then you're going to make sure that you go to Minecraft 1.16 if you're using that version, or if you're not, then you make sure you pick the version that you are using. Then once we do that, we're going to go through, oh sorry, you have to actually go on mods first, not mod packs. We'll select the version again, Minecraft 1.16. Once that loads, then we have all of the mod choices for our server. The thing is, if you pick any of these mods and you want your friends who are joining the server to be able to use them too, they also need to download the exact same mods as you. So you may want to go to mod packs and install mod packs for both your server and for your friends because it'll package them all together that you want. Or when you download them, you can package them up yourself and share them with your friends or just give them a list and they can come search here for each of the mods in your mod pack. And then they can join your server without any problems. But we'll just uh, download just enough items as an example. So you'll come to 1.16 for the recent files here. Beta is B, alpha is A, so you probably want the more stable version, which is the beta. You download that. We're going to have to put it in both our Minecraft servers mods folder and our percent app data percent dot Minecraft folder here. Now, if you didn't catch that, you're just going to type in app data up here, percent app data percent in your Windows Explorer, hit enter. It'll take you to this folder. You can click .minecraft, and it should have a mods folder if you installed Forge for your client. If you haven't done that yet, then I have a video that shows you everything you need to know and how to do that, and I'll also link that in the description. So once you download JEI, you'll go to your downloads folder. You'll just drag that over here into your Minecraft mods folder. Then in your Minecraft server folder, there's also a mods folder. You'll just drag that also into that folder. Then your server is ready to go with it, but you have to restart the server every new mod that you put in. So you can type stop in the server thing, server console, or you can just hit the X up here. But if you want to be proper about it, you can stop just like that, turn it off. Then just hit run again. And you should be all set. It'll load up with the new mod. If there's any issues, it'll have a lot of red text and then the console window here may close on you. And you'll have to go to the mods creator to get specific troubleshooting help from them. But just to show you that it works here, we'll load back up our Forge client. And we'll go into the server and make sure that You'll hit multiplayer, direct connect, host, join server. Now we're in the world. You hit E for inventory, it'll open up, and you can see that JEI is working, and we're on a server. The same should be true of any of your friends that join, as long as they have the same Forge version and the same mod installed on their computer. Now to get your friends to uh, be able to connect, you're going to go to whatismyip.com and it will show you right on the front of the page when you load the page whatismyip.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. It'll show you your IP address, which is connectable from anyone in the world pretty much. But uh, you set a whitelist, then only your friends that you have designated to be able to join will be able to join. And uh, you can just give them the number that shows up on whatismyip.com. And then in their Minecraft server, or in their Minecraft client, they will just put, instead of localhost in that direct connect, they will put your IP address. So let me just show you how that works real quick. Your multiplayer, your friend will either click direct connection or add server. We'll do it with add server this time, just a good example. And they can name it. my friend's server whoever their friend is 
and then the server address might be 44.298.1.29 then all they have to do is hit done obviously I can't resolve it here because I just used an example IP address but hopefully if you give them your correct IP address it'll show up and then all they have to do is click join server and you'll be all set some people who have specific routers and other things like that they may have to do port forwarding on the router, which is a topic for another video. And uh, once I complete that video, I will leave a link to that as well in the description. So I hope that this has helped you out in getting started on making a Minecraft server that has Forge or mods. And if it has, please leave a comment. And also, if you would, like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.